China is working on a huge project to move water, defying nature's rules. They're building really long man-made water paths with canals and tunnels, even through mountains. This is to provide water to the dry cities in the north where lots of factories are. This video explains the South to North Water Diversion Project. We'll talk about its cost, reasons behind it, how it affects nature, and whether it'll actually help the people in China. China's Difficult Geography China's historical relationship with its land has been shaped by its geography. The presence of rivers like the Yanks and Yellow has nurtured the East, making it a hub for civilization and fertile lands. In contrast, the northern and western regions are characterized by dreeness and hills, resulting in fewer settlements. The East's allure is evident as most people have chosen to reside there. Urban centers like Beijing and cities to the north held significance, but China's growth intensified the challenge of water scarcity. Groundwater became a vital resource, sustaining the expanding population and industries. However, the excessive urban and industrial demands led to its depletion. The encroaching Gobi Desert compounded the problem by encroaching upon grasslands. This desertification is attributed to human activities like deforestation and exacerbated by climate change. By the 1950s, the pressing need for water had become evident. Rapid urbanization and population growth strained the available water resources. A solution was imperative to combat the increasing aridity in these regions. In response, Mao Zedong, the founding figure of modern China, formulated a groundbreaking plan. Mao's vision aimed to address the water crisis through the ambitious South-North Water Transfer Project. As cities continued to expand and water scarcity intensified, this initiative held the promise of rejuvenating these parched areas. The project's realization, however, has come with complex challenges and trade-offs. It stands as a testament to China's resilience and innovation in the face of environmental adversity. The South North Water Mega Project. In 1952, Mao Zedong of the People's Republic of China suggested moving water from the water-rich South to the dry North. He said, South has water, North lacks. If possible, borrowing some would help. After five decades in 2002, the State Council approved Mao's idea. It became the South North Water Transfer Project, an ambitious plan connecting aqueducts, tunnels, reservoirs, and dams. This project aimed to transport water from the water-rich south to the water-scarce north. It included three main canal systems, eastern, central, and western routes. The eastern route begins near Yangzhou and uses a branch of the Yangtze River. The eastern route, an old pump station is really big. It moves water from the Yangtze River to the Jinghang Grand Canal, a long man-made waterway. The water goes through a tunnel under the ground and crosses the Yellow River. Then, some water channels carry it to Chunjin, near Beijing. This whole trip is over 1,100 kilometers. They started building it in 2002 and hoped to use it by 2013, but it took longer because of problems. Finally, in 2017, water reached Tianjin. About 1 billion cubic meters of water each year helped 10 million people in the city. The central route. The central route of this big project is different. It didn't have existing things to use, so building it was harder. It starts at a place called Danjanku Reservoir. They needed to raise the Danjanku Dam by 15 meters so water could flow easily north. This meant people from Hubei and Henan had to move from their homes. The rest of the route is like a water highway with canals and tunnels. One canal, Shai Aqueduct, is 12 kilometers long over the Shea River. It goes all the way to Beijing, the capital. They finished it in 2014, and it's 1,200 kilometers long. But it caused issues for people who use the Han River. So a huge tunnel is being built underground to solve this. It will go one kilometer under the ground, connecting places. It will be the longest and deepest man-made waterway ever. By 2030, the central route could move a lot of water, about a third of a huge reservoir's capacity. Western Route the western route of China's South-North Water Transfer Project is different. It's not built yet, they're still planning it. Among the three routes, this one is the hardest to build. They want to make waterways and tunnels from the Yangtze River to the Yellow River through a high area called Qinghai Tibet Plateau. It's really high up, around 3 to 5 kilometers above sea level. The land and weather there make this plan really tough. They might even have to move mountains to make it work. They think it might be ready by 2050. When it's done, it could bring 17 cubic kilometers of water every year to the north. 
This would help around 100 million people there. Some people talked about using this route to take water from other countries' rivers like Brahmaputra and Mekong. These rivers go through India and Southeast Asia, but this wasn't officially decided. India was worried that China could control these rivers, so they talked about it. Effects on Chinese people Although the South North Water Transfer Project is still in progress, it's already seen as a success by China. The project's proponents claim that approximately 140 million people living in arid regions are benefiting from it. However, divergent perspectives exist within China's various governing bodies. The project has generated varied reactions from different Chinese provinces. For instance, Sichuan and Hubei have reservations about the concept of redirecting water from the Yangtze River to the north. They fear that this movement might adversely affect their water resources and energy production. In contrast, Gansu and Qinghai view the Western Route favorably. These provinces anticipate that the Western Route could bring economic and agricultural advantages to their regions. While the overall picture suggests a positive trajectory for the project, it is important to note that opinions are divided within China. The South North Water Transfer Project stands as an example of how complex and multifaceted large-scale infrastructure projects can be, triggering both optimism and caution depending on local circumstances and perspectives. As the project continues, these differing viewpoints will play a crucial role in shaping its impact and further development. Effects on the environment Even though the South North Water Transfer Project could help some cities in the north, it has worried environmentalists from around the world. This project creates artificial water paths, not like the natural rivers. This has stopped many rivers and dried some up. Around 600 rivers disappeared as they built these new paths. These new waterways have also ended up with pollution from factories and waste. This happens because cities and villages dump their trash in them. Plus, there aren't enough places to clean the water along the way. When they changed the Yanks River's path, experts were worried it could let salty sea water into places like Shanghai. If they continue making these new paths, salty water might reach far inland. This could cause a big water problem across the country. The Western Route's plan is causing issues too. They want to make tunnels through mountains. This might cause landslides and hurt nature. Also, the area is often hit by earthquakes. Making this project, there could cost the government lots of money if a big earthquake happens. Today, the South North Water Transfer Project is facing many environmental problems. Is the project successful? The project finished two of its three planned routes. But even though that's true, building it has been very costly for China's government and people. They spent about 62 billion US dollar on it. This doesn't even include the money they need to take care of the canals, dams, and more, which is more than 3,000 kilometers long. Even with all this money, they haven't fully achieved their main goal of giving clean water to the north. What do you think about the South North Water Transfer Project? Do you believe the good things about it are better than the problems it causes for the environment? Should they still build the Western Route? Tell us in the comments below. If you want to know about other big projects like this, check out our video about the biggest mega projects in the world. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.